Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions. We're going to close out this week checking out a special selection. This one coming at us from a Czech guy. Hi, this is a solo acoustic guitar composition out of the window to fly again from a 1996 album Birdcage by a Czech guitarist Radim Halarik. Wonder what your thoughts are. So let's dive into this. I do know that the volume is a bit low on a lot of this track. I was trying to level that out, but it does have peaks that hit full volume. So I think it's just going to end up being a bit of a quiet track for all of you. I'll have it turned up, of course, a little bit on my end so I can hear it. But I didn't want to blow anybody's speakers out because I put it at a normalized volume for 90% of it. And then it peaks really high on the other 10%. So I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. If you want to listen to it, though, as usual, I always include a link to it in the description. You can go listen to it on your own if you find that this isn't a great way to experience this track, especially for your first time. Let's dive into it. I love those little flourishes. There's parts where you get these really high-pitched harmonics from mostly muting a string. There's a lot of color in all of the choices that went into this instrument. The material of the body, the material of the strings. Playing around with time right there. Yeah, the explosiveness of not just the volume and the rising pitch, but the rising speed of the notes as well. really beautiful creating that darkness and immediately pulling into something pretty much the polar opposite of it That was a fun little walk down there. Beautiful. Mm. 
bringing this theme back from the beginning. I love when those harmonics get stuffed right into the middle of a chord. It's like one of the strings has a harmonic on it, none of the rest do, and it's just gorgeous. Such great resonance on the strings. Too. Like, I just can't, I can't compliment the choice of instrument enough. I think this is the second time we've heard this theme as well. To soften the volume down and then burst out pretty quickly. It's a, a momentary reduction of volume. taking a very large moment to explore something outside of the energy we've been at this entire track. Like wind? Some sort of white noise in the background. Ooh, well, okay, it was just wind. I honestly thought that the song slowing down and exploring that more spacious resonant section was going to be a type of bridge we were going to bring back one of the two motifs that we saw in the first six minutes to finish the song out in a sort of AABA format. That is not how it ended though. The song proper, the musical aspect I should say ended about seven and a half minutes in and the final 90 seconds was 
that. Quite unexpected. Quite unexpected indeed. All right, so I think there's three main points I want to touch on here. First is going to be technical ability. Second is going to be theme, storytelling, all that stuff, emotion, how it made me feel. And the third thing is going to be that outro, I suppose. It's, it's something. <laughs> So let's kick it off. Technical ability. I really love the way everything plays out here. I mentioned a few times that I really love the resonance, the tone of the instrument. The skill in playing this actually starts before playing it. This song would have sounded very differently with any other instrument. I don't know who chose this specific guitar with these specific strings, but whoever did picked it perfectly for this song. There's a really nice warmth and resonance to the tone that creates the this very full body, even on higher pitch sounds, which tend to be a bit narrower in, in width, end up feeling very full bodied still. It really doesn't matter what note is being played. It, it takes up space, a lot of space. It fills the soundscape. Even when playing quieter, these sounds still feel large. And I really love that aspect of it. It creates an atmosphere that feels simultaneously large and small. A lot of this song is on the quieter side, and when we have that juxtaposed with the louder sections, we can see just how much space there is to fill that isn't, because the sound itself is quieter. But because the sounds themselves tend to be a bit wider, even without hitting that volume peak, they're still filling out space. The quieter sections should feel smaller than they do, and they don't. They actually have a lot of width and take up space, so it ends up feeling introspective and lonely, but not isolated, if that makes any sense. And I think it's a unique little characteristic for this. Some of it may be in the production, too, the way that the instrument is EQ'd and some of that stuff. Um, but a lot of it, to me, comes down to the instrument choice. There's also the technical side of the performance. Yes, there are some faster runs in here, definitely some showmanship elements that require some chops in order to play properly, but what stands out to me, and long-time viewers, y'all know where I'm going with this, Radim knows how to play the right notes correctly. And this is just, it's everything to do with the performance itself. And yes, this typically does get relegated just to acoustic performances. There's a little bit less room for this when you hit uh, digital instruments and even electronic instruments that are run through a ton of pedals and effects and amplifiers and cabinets and all that stuff. A lot of information on the nuance side gets erased through that entire process, especially when we look at heavy distortion and overdrive, like in some rock and metal. So it makes sense that I would talk about it here, especially given that this is an acoustic instrument where, where a lot of those nuances in performance can be heard, but they're everywhere. How hard do you hit a string? And that doesn't have to deal with volume as much as body. Um, how hard do you press the strings down on the neck with your left hand? Which strings get more pressure? The less pressure you get, the less resonant of a tone because you're going to stop the vibrations a little bit more than on another string. And sometimes you can achieve a harmonic pitch that way. And we do have some really cool moments where we get a harmonic pitch inside of a chord, which means one of those strings is just not held down as much 
as the others, where we get the full sound out of three of the strings and then a harmonic sound out of the fourth. I love the way that these harmonics get tucked into the middle of chords that way. It is just phenomenal. Um, there is a bit of a different characteristic between some of the harder strummed notes and the softer strummed notes. I think a lot of that comes down to, again, string selection, but also how they're being picked. I don't think all of this has the same picking technique. I think it's all finger picking for sure. Um, but I get different, I get variants in the timbre, the characteristics of some of these, and it makes me think that some of the notes are being strummed with nails, uh, like the top of the nail where you would run your finger down. Some might be plucked by the nail itself as a type of pick. Um, there's also some thumb picking in here, I think, and some fingertip picking. And when do you choose to use any of those? And why do you choose to use those? And it, it creates this ebb and flow to the song. The characteristics of the notes change just as often as anything else. Some of those other things that change just as often is inflection, which is how hard you would hit a note or how hard you would strum the string, but also volumes. We have so much volume movement in this track. It is phenomenal. Sometimes we have these gradual descents, decrescendo. Sometimes we have gradual ascents, uh, crescendos. But sometimes it's not so immediate either. There was one point that uh, I focused on. I said, hey, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, it was like two beats of decrescendo, bringing the volume down. And then immediately it was like a run. Right, eighth note run, a few notes, da, 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 just kind of bring the volume down with it, and then immediately into a very full bodied, full volume chord strum. And it was just this explosive moment that came out of this rapid movement towards timidness. And it's it's these it's all of it. It's it's the ebb and flow of the song across so many different parameters, and it just sounds wonderful there's so much control over minutia coming from redeem and it, it's just to me it showcases one a dedication to the craft this is not something that an amateur or even an intermediate guitarist could do this is somebody who has dedicated a lot of time to learning this instrument but it's also somebody who understands music it isn't just about, hey, you know, I've, I've practiced this instrument in isolation, you know, practicing runs and uh, chord shapes and volumetric control and all this stuff for, for years. And this is my first track. No, this is somebody who understands how music is formed, what makes it emotive, how can you tell a story through music, through basically sound. I mean, it's really kind of magical <laughs> that music works the way it does. People, in this case, a person plucks some strings that create sound waves in the air and they hit your ears and you feel emotions through that. That's magic. Uh, and he understands the magic of it all. How to craft music. When to get bigger, when to get smaller. When is that smaller not something that is volume-based? You can still be loud with a small sound. And soft with a big sound. I think that's the same. I don't remember. You understand the idea, though, about contrasting uh, variables. It is, it is just masterful. And then, of course... Should I put this in this section or I'll put it in let's let's move on. Okay, so that's like all the master mastery of the instrument, right? The performance itself. But what about the music? I like how there's a, a repeat. It allows there to be a, a sort of motif. I don't think the whole song gets repeated. There were two specific ideas that I heard revisited. I think one of them had a little bit of variation to it. But for the most part, they were one-to-one -one from what I recall. But there's a lot of unique ideas that existed around them. 
what came in the beginning of the song, what came between the looping or the revisiting of these motifs that tell something a bit more linear with a cyclical component within it. That's what stands out to me. A lot of songs are either l completely linear, like when you listen to prog songs, and it's just A, B, C, D, E, just keep going to new ideas. Other songs are cyclical. A lot of modern music is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, the A, B, A, B, C, B, sometimes C, A, B. A lot of revisiting of ideas. This song exists between those two extremes. I do feel it is linear. We are always progressing to something new. However, there are moments when we revisit something previously. It's a lot like life. Life always pushes forward. There's no way to revisit anything from the past, but that doesn't mean that we don't revisit the past. Now, this metaphor kind of falls apart a little bit, but we have memories and things might remind us of older things and we will revisit those memories in our minds. That's sort of what this song feels like to me. You're always going forward. There's no way to go back to something that you've done before, but you can always think about it. And so those ideas can crop up within other concepts. Out of the window to fly again. Still thinking about that. What did the song make me feel though? I like how it's not afraid to explore things emotionally through the harmonies, the chord progressions. A lot of it, I would say, is a bit on a more introspective level. Not necessarily positive. There are some moments of elation, but I wouldn't necessarily say there's joy or victory in any of this. But it does take on a somber tone. However, not truly negative. I wouldn't say there's anything sad in here or angry confused. It just feels introspective with a little bit of a, a bittersweet vibe sort of sitting around this neutral position. But what I love is that the neutrality might be the base concept but not the only explored one. There were a lot of chords in here where we'll explore this sound and then dip into something pretty dark. Sometimes hover around there a little bit, sometimes hit it once and immediately move off. And typically where we move to from here was the polar opposite. We need to balance this darkness with something brighter. And we'll usually have some sort of very positive, bright resolution to that tension before resolving back down in the middle. It's about balance throughout all of this. It's somebody, I think, to me, it's an exploration. I, I already brought up memory, right? And now that I'm thinking about this, memory might be more important to my understanding of this track than anything else. It is solitary, right? We do have one person playing one instrument. That is it in the entire thing. But I mentioned that it wasn't isolating as far as the production goes on it. Sometimes being within your mind and can feel lonely, but I don't think it always is, especially when we are revisiting memories. I don't know if anybody who's a psychology major, let me know if this, if there's been studies on this, uh, at least for me, I can't speak for anybody else on this topic, at least. Um, going through my memories isn't lonely, and I kind of have a hypothesis that it might be because most of the memories I revisit are ones about people, social engagements, and stuff like that. I am with people, even if I'm not with people. I am isolated and singular, but I am not 
lonely. I think about things that have happened and reflect on them, positive or negative. Some memories certainly hurt a little bit more than others. And there are certainly memories that I tend to fixate on, not necessarily at one time, though that does occur, but the memories that I more frequently return to than others, possibly. Little motifs in my past, if you will. That's what this song sort of reminds me of. At least most of it. The first six and a half minutes, we'll say. It's about, to me, anyways, reflection on one's past. Presumably, though, that reflection must be for a purpose. Sometimes it might be a negative purpose, just a little mental spiral to fall down. Other times, maybe to remember some of the good times. I'm trying to tie all this up with the ending of the track, which is the last thing I wanted to talk about. But I find it difficult because I don't really understand what the ending is. The song slows down to a crawl. Very spacious, lots of room for sound, and yet the guitarist refuses to play. We get a note every couple of beats, sometimes a chord, all very quiet. Any of the energy and electricity of the larger, louder moments is completely missing here. Those runs are missing completely. There's nothing here other than these solitary, isolated notes. Every once in a while, with plenty of silence to space them out. As this progresses and the guitar gets quieter and reduces the number of notes there are in a given time, there's this white noise, this wind that begins to pop up underneath all of it and fade in. Eventually, the guitar stops completely. The wind rises. There is some sort of foghorn off on the distance. It sounded a bit distorted to me the first time, certainly heavily distorted the second time. And then the wind fades out as well. Wind is important to flying. Out of the window to fly again. That is what the track is called. I spoke about balance. Balance is also important to flight. All this stuff sort of comes together, but I don't get it. Out of the window to fly again. I don't know. Maybe it could be the concept of injury. A bird who injures their wing. And somebody takes them in and nurses them back to health. And when the wing is ready to go again, they open the window and allow the bird to return back to nature. If we took this into a human perspective, getting an injury that certainly withholds you from things. Maybe you break a leg or something. You're in a cast for a couple of months. There is certainly a lot more time for introspection. Less physical activity would increase the mental activity. Maybe the ending is not supposed to be as negative as I kind of feel it is. The guitar losing its voice, the wind overtaking and it fading as well, but an opportunity for freedom yet again. The wind portraying the ability to go back out into the world. The fade out being the limitless potential of building new memories to add on to what you had thought about while you were injured. I don't know. I feel like I'm grasping at straws on that one. I wish I could say that with any sort of certainty or confidence. This is what I got out of the song, but I feel a bit flakier about that ending and incorporating it into what I felt about the opening six minutes of the track. I'm curious, though, what everybody else's thoughts are, because those are mine on Radim Hadak's... 
Redeem Haladix out of the window to fly again. That that H L sound at the beginning of the last name is not something that my mouth is used to doing. It's definitely a different uh, linguistic uh, muscle memory thing, and I, I just I just botched that twice in a row. <laughs> I did so well at the beginning, though. I will say, though, that this was the third take of this video because I kept messing up the intro. <laughs> so, you know, when I when I start these videos and it's just a really great pronunciation at the beginning, that's why I had multiple takes on it, usually. <laughs> I don't have multiple takes on the ending or else I would have to edit them. And I really like the freeform flow of the videos. You get to see all of my thoughts in real time, and I think that is a core element of my video styles so you know sometimes I don't have as great of a pronunciation by the end of the video as I do at the beginning anyways those are my thoughts what are yours let me know if you enjoyed this if there's anything that stood out to you anything you like to add on to what I said or correct me on maybe you just have your own thoughts perspectives and opinions about the track toss all of that down in the comment section above that in the description box you'll find a link to linktree it takes you here you can find links to my music ways to support the channel a link to the discord server and so much more above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell I greatly appreciate all three of those all right, that wraps it up for this week. I will be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we're going to continue on with... Uh, we're not continuing anything. We're checking out a full album, and it's going to be a big one. It's like a triple album, maybe. It's like 90 minutes of music, and it has a lot. Of, it's a concept album. I think the video is just going to be like five hours long, easy. It's going to be a big one. That's all I know. Check in to that if you're excited about that. If a five-hour video sounds ridiculous, I'll be back Monday, y'all know, with my usual 30 to 40-minute stuff. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.